Hello folks, today in this video, we are going to see, uh, learn about covalent bonds. And specifically, we are going to learn about how to draw the Lewis dot structure of covalent compounds and covalent bonds. Here's a picture of all the bonds through history We've got, I can't name them all. The, the center one is Daniel Craig. This is Sean Connery, who actually recently passed away this year, one of the classic. Pierce Brosnan. This is Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton. I don't remember this guy's name. He was, pro, I think he was the very first James Bond. Okay, let's take a look. First, uh, let me show you the structure of caffeine. Many of you have seen me wear a tie with this structure on the tie. This is the shape of caffeine, and after you learn about Lewis compounds, you'll understand this drawing more. These lines that are shown here are covalent bonds, and this is how the, each atom is attached to each other. The way caffeine works is its molecule has a shape like this. And it looks a lot like a compound that regularly occurs in our body, which is called adenosine. Now, adenosine, when it's released in our brain, it makes you feel sleepy. It causes drowsiness. It opens blood vessels. It makes you feel sleepy. But because caffeine kind of looks like adenosine, it can get fit into receptors where adenosine normally should be and block those receptors. And when those receptors are blocked, we no longer feel drowsy. Our blood vessels are no longer open. They're constricted. And that makes us feel more awake. Pure caffeine is just a white powder. It looks like this. And like many covalent compounds look like this, like a pure white powder. No, that's not cocaine, as many of my students have commented in the past. It is caffeine. Here's another example of a covalent compound. When you see a structure like this, each intersection is a carbon atom. And they're usually connected to four things. So you see here, this carbon atom has one, two, three connections, three bonds here. And it's connected to two other carbon atoms. If it doesn't show a fourth connection, that's a hydrogen. So each one of these carbons has a hydrogen attached to it. This is the structure for tear gas. Tear gas is oftentimes, well, let me just show you a quick video of the one time uh, Dr. Wu encountered tear gas. So this was when I was traveling in Bolivia and there was a uh, protest. This was when I was in college and I was traveling abroad. There was protest because people were not happy with how the economy was going. This was right during and after the uh, economic crash of 2009. And so there was, it was a global wide economic crash. The cops came. I really, they're more like military police started shooting tear gas at people. I got a little scared. Let's take a look. That's me. This was in the city of La Paz, Bolivia, and uh, 
you know, when you inha when I inhaled the tear gas, it just burned a lot, made me want to cry. And uh, they just use it to disperse the crowds. How does it work? Well, it's the structure of tear gas that makes it work a certain way. When this molecule goes into your nose and your sinuses, it will connect to certain receptors in your nose and sinuses and make you tear up and make you cry. And it all has to do with its chemical structure. Okay, let's talk about covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are when non-metals share electrons to form full outer shells. These are also called covalent bonds that they form. So they share electrons, and it happens with non-metals. Let's take, for example, H2. If I were to draw the Bohr diagram of hydrogen, and I had two hydrogens here, so this is both hydrogen, they both have one electron. If they come close enough together, they can share each electron with each other. And it's like each electron belongs to both of them. And if each electron belongs to both of them and they're sharing, each one has two electrons in its outer shell. And each one then has a full shell. That's really good for them. It makes them happy. It makes them stable, lower in energy. And so it forms a compound. If I were to draw the Lewis structure for that, here's H with each one electron. And I'm going to just connect them with a line to show two elect. Whenever I draw a covalent bond, a line represents two shared electrons, one from each hydrogen. And that's how I would show that. If I were to show F2, well, first let me draw the Bohr diagram. So this is H2. Let me draw the Bohr diagrams of F2. So I'm going to draw the Bohr diagram of F with just its valence electrons. F has seven valence electrons. And I'm going to do, draw the same thing here. They each have seven electrons, which is not great because they want eight. But if they share one electron to each, I'm going to move this one closer. And I'm going to draw seven valence electrons. But if they share one electron with each other each, notice how each has eight electrons in its outer shell now. If I were to draw the Lewis diagram here, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for one F, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the other F. And if they share these electrons, each one now has eight valence electrons. So for example, the, one, the F on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer shell because this one is being shared. This one right here. So sharing electrons helps elements form full outer shells. Let me do CH4 now. I'm going to erase all of these. Let's take a look at CH4. C, and I'm just going to draw the Lewis structure now. C has four valence electrons. H, let me just erase these stray marks. Each H has one valence electron. What do you think is going to happen? Well, if each H... Sorry. If each H shares one electron with hydrogen, I'm sorry, if each H shares one electron with carbon, and I'm going to show that by drawing this line here, carbon, which had four, now has one electron shared from each hydrogen, and now has eight. So this has eight electrons, and each hydrogen has two electrons. And if you remember, hydrogen, which just has one level, 
if it has two electrons, that's a full outer shell. So now each hydrogen has two electrons forming a full shell, and each carbon has eight electrons forming a full shell. Let's look at CF4. C has four electrons, valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. What do you think will happen to each one of these Fs and to the carbon so that it, each one has full outer shells? Well, if each fluorine shares one electron with carbon and each carbon shares one electron, well, if carbon shares one electron with each fluorine, well, what will happen at that point is now carbon has eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon has eight electrons now. And fluorine, each fluorine will also have eight because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each one has eight electrons. When fluorine shares its one valence electron with carbon. So this is why covalent bonds form. You can share one, two, you can share one electron and carbon can share one electron with each fluorine and they now all have full outer shells. Real quickly, let me just say that when, mole when atoms do this, they form molecules and each covalent molecule is a discrete individual particle and they tend to have lower melting and boiling points because of this whereas ionic compounds form crystal lattices and these have higher melting and boiling points okay what i wanted us to do now is i'm going to walk you through this handout about how to draw Lewis structures. Let's take a look. The handout in question is this guy right here. Let me walk you through this in case you are not able to join us in class. Or even if you are, this is a good introductory video. Let's say we want to draw the Lewis structure for CH2O. Well, the way I'm going to do that is step one. I want to draw the atomic Lewis structures for each atom. So carbon would have four valence electrons, hydrogen would have one, and oxygen would have five. And when I do this, I want to draw one electron on each side as I go around. So for example, oxygen will have one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to start pairing them up, five, six. That's how I draw them one on each side, and I go around as, and pair them up. And the s atom with the largest number of unpaired electrons, which is just single electrons, that's the central atom. And in this case, that is carbon. The next thing I want to do is add up the total number of valence electrons. So for CH2O, that means I have 1C, 2H is 1O. And I see I have 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6 when I add up all of the valence electrons. So that means in total, I have 12 valence electrons. And that's the number of electrons that I have available to use. So when I add 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6, I know I have 12 total to use. The next thing I want to do is draw my central atom, and I want to surround it with the other atoms. That's what I see here. The next thing I do is I connect the central atom to each of the outer atoms with a single bond. And remember, each bond represents two electrons. So what that means is when I've drawn these three bonds, and I'll draw them here too, 
So that means I've used six electrons. I started out with 12, I used six. I have six left to use that I must place. And I place them around the outs, one of the either, I basically place them around the outside atoms. In this case, I'm going to put them around O because hydrogen can't handle any more. Hydrogen just needs two electrons to form a full outer shell. So once you draw a single bond to hydrogen, you are always done with hydrogen in that case. So I'm going to draw those six electrons around oxygen. And I use them all. So I have none left to use. I have used all 12 electrons. Because remember, each of these bonds represents one. In fact, I'm going to draw that here. Each of these bonds, sorry, each of these bonds represents two electrons. So I've used 12 in all. But Notice, I need to count for one thing. I need to count the electrons around the central atom. If it does not have eight, let's count the electrons around the central atom. Carbon has one, two, three valence electrons, and then three shared with it. So for a total of four, five, and six, it has a six total valence electrons. I'm sorry, six electrons in total. It has three valence electrons and six electrons in total in this picture. And that's not good. We want it to have eight. So if it does not have eight, I need to convert two electrons from here into a double bond. And so if I were to go up here, that means I would, I would erase two electrons here and draw a double bond to share two electrons. Notice that when I do this, two things. So here, carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons around it, and it has eight in total, five, six, seven, eight. Hydrogen each has one valence electrons, that's right, and it has two total. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons and eight total. So each atom has the right number of valence electrons and a full outer shell. So that means it is a correct drawing. Let's do this one together, NH3. Let's do this one together. Step one, remember, is I need to draw the Lewis structure for each atom. So here's N, one, two, three, four, five valence electrons it has. H has one. Now I know N is going to be the central atom because it has three unpaired valence electrons. So I have N, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna surround it with three hydrogens. The next step is to, well, actually, I think I skipped ahead. Step two was to count my number of valence electrons. So, in fact, let me just erase this. Step two is to count the number of valence electrons that I have. N has five. Oops. Step two is to count the number of valence electrons that I have. N has five, and I have H, which has one, and I have three of these. So five plus one plus one plus one gives me eight valence electrons that I have to use. Now I'm going to draw my N and I'm going to draw my three H's around because my N's in the center, and I'm going to connect them with single bonds. I have used one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. I have two left to use. I cannot put them on the H because the H is full. So my step four is to put my two electrons over N. My step five is to count the number of electrons around the central atom. I have 
one, two, three, four, five electrons for nitrogen. And if I add up the ones that are being shared, I have six, seven, eight around nitrogen. It has eight, and so we are good. We don't need any double bonds or triple bonds. Notice also that nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons, which is what we expect. We expect nitrogen to have valence, five valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, and that's what we expect. Let's do one more. Let's do carbon. The first step is to draw the Lewis structure of each atom. That's carbon. Let's draw oxygen. Oxygen is one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. This guy has four unpaired electrons, so we know carbon is going to go in the center. Now, before I do that, I need to add up my valence electrons. I know carbon has four. I know oxygen has six. And I have two oxygens because it's CO2. So let's add up. That's four plus six plus six. I have 16 valence electrons that I can use. My step three is I draw my carbon in the center, my oxygens on the side, and I draw one line to each. I have used four electrons. 16 minus four is I know I have 12 left. Let's place them around the outer edge. One, I, I should say, on the outer atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've used all 16 electrons. Now my step four is to count the number of electrons around carbon. It has two valence electrons and two that are being shared from oxygen for a total of four. But how many does carbon need around it in order for it to be happy? It needs eight. So I'm going to move to some of these outer electrons to double bonds. Now carbon has six electrons around it. Let's do that again. If I do it over here, now carbon has eight electrons around it. Let me show that to you. Now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, and that it, it makes it happy. It's got four valence electrons, and then two being shared from each oxygen, so now it has eight total of electrons. So that is the Lewis structure for oxygen, and I'm going to redraw it, and it's going to look just like this. It has two double bonds with each oxygen. In class, we're going to try these on the next page together. You can an try answering these questions on your own and then try answering these questions. We will go over this in class.